Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. You know, we're in this series uh, called Not a Bone is Broken, and we're talking about the promises and the covenants of God and, and how that relates to my life. And, and, uh, and, and, and we also talked about how that uh, we can have an agreement with God, right? God has an agreement with us, but until we come into agreement with that, with that agreement, there is no agreement, amen? In other words, nothing's ever going to happen or change in our life if we're not in agreement with what God says. And often in my life, I don't know if it's in your life, but maybe just in my life, so I'll, I'll preach to myself. If I had a mirror in front of me this morning, I would preach to myself and I'd say, you know what, sometimes the things that I hold inside of myself and say, think are true, maybe they just aren't true. And so I really want you to challenge some of the truths that you think you know, especially when we go to the Word of God, because you know what, the Word of God is always there to change me, amen? There's stuff in the Bible that I don't even know, amen? Isn't it awesome? I'm in shocker right there. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't, Pastor Everett doesn't know everything, amen? And it's okay if I don't know everything. It's okay if I seem a little dumb or, in, or even stupid sometimes to people. But, but you know what? It's, it's okay because I'm not the smartest person. Jesus is the smart. He is the way, the truth, and the life, amen? So if I want truth, I want Jesus. If I want, if I want to know more about Jesus, I go to the Word of God, amen? The Word of God is what comes in and changes us. It's what should be saturating our heart, our mind, and even our attention this morning, amen? That's why I worship him, amen? That's why I worship him. I, I, I love this, this, uh, this picture that we see. Uh, uh, there's, it, it's, a, it's a great picture of the creative power of God and that God is able to create things. Uh, he created a uh, woman, uh, and he took woman from man, right? Adam, he put Adam to sleep. He pulled out a rib, <laughs> amen? And he, and he created, he formed woman, right? He formed woman, he created man, right? We're just a dirt bag. Most men are just dirt bags, you know. If you, you turn your neighbor, you're just a dirt bag if he's a guy. But, but a woman was formed, amen? So, so God created woman for a specific reason, right? And, and a specific purpose. Anybody know what it is? Does anybody know what the purpose of the woman is? Anybody know? Anybody know? Anybody know? It's a, to be a helper, right? To be a help meet, right? Somebody to help the man, amen? That's what it was. Now, now we does, it doesn't mean that the woman is less than, okay? Don't go, don't go claiming your rights this morning. I know you have rights, but, but it's, it's not that you're less than. You're created, and I think it's a full expression of what God looks like, a man and a woman, a conquering king and a nurturing, caring, loving person is a picture of what God looks like, amen? Because uh, we were created in the image, right, of God, amen? And so, so the woman, uh, the word meet, if you, if you look it up, it's to fulfill or satisfy a need or requirement or a condition, right? I think our vision statement this morning as a church or even as a, a believer, it should come to, uh, under, uh, uh, under arrest this morning because we should remember that we're here for, for a need, right? We're here for a requirement that God has for us, amen, as the church, amen? Oh, did I say that we're the church? Did you know that the church is the bride of Christ? Did you know that? We are the bride of Christ. Amen? Do you know that? I don't want to stretch you too far, but, you know, we, we are the bride of Christ. So God created man and he formed woman uh, from, from what he had already created. It's, it's powerful to me because God didn't have to make something else, right? He made something good. He made it good, good enough the first time to take from that and make something even, even I think, even better. But... Uh, and so, so God created uh, a man, and He formed woman, and He and He, and he put a, put man somewhere. Does anybody know where He put put? Where did God place man in the Garden of Eden, which is the, the Garden of the Lord? All right. Uh, so, so Garden of God. So He put man in a place, in a in a specific place for a specific purpose. You know what it was? The purpose of man was to tend, right? To tend the garden. It was his his. His job, only, only job he had was to tend the garden. You know, that means that he, he had to pull weeds, he had to do whatever. He, I think he, I always like to say he had to keep this, he used to keep the snakes out, right? And uh, that was his job to keep the snakes out of the garden because, you know, no woman likes snakes, really. And, uh, and so, and so God, God gave him a specific task, right? And, and as I, I go forward, you can look forward and we can read a bunch of verses, but uh, Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, uh, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. And so my job this morning is to guard my heart, amen? That's your job this morning is to guard your heart this morning, right? It's your job to tend the garden, amen? You must tend your garden this morning. Hit your neighbor right in the elbow really hard, right where the funny bone thing is, and just go and say, your job is to tend the garden, amen? Amen. Uh, 
And so, so man was created to tend the garden. Man was created to work, amen? We were created to work. We weren't created to, to, to not work. We're, we're created to be working at something, amen? And so <clears throat> let me insert a little statement here, okay? Did you know that dysfunction always will bring about more dysfunction? Did you ever notice that? If you have something dysfunctional in your life, it will always continue to be dysfunctional, okay? Because dysfunction is always dysfunctional, right? Isn't that true? Can we just say amen to that? Because that's a true statement right there. But function, right, something that works like the moon. Let's, let's look at the moon. The moon, for example, works perfectly, right? It revolves around the earth exactly right. It makes the tides come and go. And so we know that God is the will of God to place a moon around the earth, okay? And I don't have enough time to go all the way to, through all of that. But the moon works perfectly, amen? It does exactly what it's supposed to do because it comes into alignment with the will of God, amen? It comes in, in under the purpose and will of God. So, so it's our job to keep our heart, right? God created man to work, <laughs> And he, and he formed woman to help. <laughs> see, see, here's one of the, let, let, let me just go marriage 101 on you, okay? The problem is that most times when we get married, all right, and I have this, had the same problem when I got married. I got married because I, I thought my, my wife was beautiful. That's why I married her, because she was beautiful. And I was like, woo-woo, you know? And I couldn't wait, right, to, to be married to her. And then, I, and then when I got married to her, guess what happened? I didn't know what to do with her. I really didn't. Because <laughs> she was smarter than I thought she was. She was more complex than I thought she was. And she has all these things that are going on, and I don't understand all those things. I just didn't understand it. And so that's the problem that we have. Most men, okay, let me just say it. Okay, we can look, and even Adam had the problem. Let's blame it on Adam. Okay, Adam, he had a problem because he, he, was, he knew right from wrong. He knew the truth. That's what he did. He knew the truth. And he was in the garden, and he was standing right next to Eve when she picked from the fruit, right? And he was standing right there when she bit into it, whether it was an apple, a pomegranate, whatever the fruit was, we don't really know. But she bit into that, and then he took, partook of what she had taken. He knew what was right and wrong. He didn't even know how to tell her what to do. He didn't say, hey, that's not right, don't do that. And he was standing right next to her. She was deceived, but he sinned, right? And, and that same process has, it goes on and on and on through marriage after marriage, through situation after situation. The, the man, right, the man doesn't know what to, what to do with this woman. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do with her. And so when she comes to him, he doesn't have a, a job for him, a, a, a task for him, because he doesn't understand his own task. Amen? And so what happens is, uh, you, you see, dysfunction has come in. Amen? It started with Adam, and it's gone on down through time after time after time after time. And so I'm going to tell you this morning, I want to pull out dysfunction this morning. Amen? I know this is a marriage seminar. Maybe you guys aren't married yet, but we are married because we are the bride of Christ. Amen? I'm speaking to, the, to Christians this morning who are the bride of Christ. And I want to tell you, the man, the, the answer to the situation is the man must know what his work is. Amen? You must know what your work is. If you don't know what your work is, you, you don't, you're, nobody's going to help you with your work because you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, right? So how can someone come help you if you don't know what you're supposed to do, amen? And it's, it's the truth in, in a physical marriage, and it's also the truth as we become a Christian. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I got saved, Lord, come and be Lord of my life, and I, I got saved, but I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. And so I'm going to tell you, I want to pull out this function from the, our relationship with God, and also our relationship with others, amen? And so we must understand what our work is, amen? Ooh, that's pretty tough. But God created man to work. He created us to work. Hit your neighbor on the shoulder and say, you know what, you're supposed to be working. Okay, you're supposed to be working. Uh, you're supposed to be working. Hmm. I'm called to help this morning. You are called to help this morning. Amen? You are called to help this morning.